Haven't we done this before? I have no record of a previous encounter. We have met. I am sure of it. Fight! 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 Round one. Fight! Around this time last year, we were given a sweet entry into the Mortal Kombat series with Mortal Kombat 11. Well, now it's time to save Earthrealm again and return back to Mortal Kombat 11 with Mortal Kombat Aftermath. This DLC gives players a further addition to the story, following the Fire and Thunder God Liu Kang defeating Kronika and three new characters. We get the fan favorite Shiva, we get Fujin, the brother of Raiden, and the OG badass cop himself, Robocop. You are under arrest, dirtbag. Mortal Kombat Aftermath is not only a new character pass, but it continues immediately where Mortal Kombat 11 finished with the new protector of Earthrealm, Liu Kang, trying to create a new era of time after defeating Kronika. However, Liu Kang cannot work with the Hourglass of Time without Kronika's crown, which was destroyed when Liu Kang defeated her. Though Shang Tsung, Fujin and Nightwolf are here to provide assistance, and offer to go back in time to the events of Mortal Kombat 11 and get Kronika's crown from Shang Tsung's island. Now if you're confused as to what's going on then you clearly need to finish the campaign of Mortal Kombat 11 but if you have and you can't recall the ending then Aftermath will provide you with a brief recap of what's happened. You'll extend the campaign from where Mortal Kombat 11 finished on chapter 12 and move through to chapter 17. In the campaign you'll be playing as Nightwolf, Fujin, Shiva, Sindel, Shao Kahn and of course Shang Tsung. Basically, all of the Mortal Kombat DLC characters that aren't from external properties. Lengthwise, the campaign is roughly 3 hours long, and there are some options to pick certain fighters for certain fights, like we got with the standard Mortal Kombat 11 campaign. This is also the first time we've seen a campaign expansion in a Mortal Kombat game, and to be honest, it's pretty cool. Without spoiling anything for anyone, this ending has me excited for what we get in the next Mortal Kombat series, as it diverts from the standard tease of a villain for the next entry. Bah! He was a rank amateur compared to Dr. Colossus! <laughs> oh. Fight. Now, if you played Mortal Kombat 11 last year, then you already know what you're in for when it comes to Mortal Kombat Aftermath. It's nothing new in regards to combat besides some new characters. Outside of the main campaign, you'll have some new levels, the reintroduction to stage fatalities, and some friendships. The attention to detail that NetherRealm Studios went to for the stage fatalities and the standard fatalities are still here. If you drop the Terminator into an acid pool on the Deadpool level, instead of getting a traditional skeleton, you'll get a T-800 frame. However, those shouldn't he still be alive trying to attack? Since when is an outer layer of skin being removed stop the Terminator? Anyways, the combat is still solid and is a reminder of why Mortal Kombat is the best fighting game of all time. Yes, the story is good and the acting is great. If you're not aware, the actor who played Shang Tsung in the 1995 Mortal Kombat film is playing Shang Tsung in the game and it's fucking rad. Though, not everything is fantastic here. If you have played Mortal Kombat 11 but you haven't played this DLC, by the time Mortal Kombat 12 comes out you may have no idea how this story has gotten into this scenario as this DLC is very important. The campaign is about 3 hours long, and for $60, for 3 hours of story, some new characters and some additions like skins and maps and friendships can be a bit much, seeing as the original game was about 80 bucks. Now if you don't have Mortal Kombat 11 or the previous season pass, then there is a Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath pack, which includes everything for about 90 bucks. Now if you haven't played it, this is the clear way to go. The new characters of Shiva, Fujin, and Robocop are pretty fucking cool. Shiva is slow but powerful due to the nature of her character, and yes, her classic combos are still there like that insane leap into the sky she's always had. Fujin has had a story update and is now the brother of Raiden, and seeing Fujin in combat and during cutscenes is like seeing Doctor Strange in the MCU. He starts off as a badass and immediately keeps that title. Robocop plays incredibly similar to the Terminator. He's slow, but he's combo based. There are a heap of customization options like with all characters. Entrances, exits, fatalities, costumes, gear. Even their interactions between characters before a fight starts are damn worth it. Hey! Where did you get those clothes? At the toilet store? Mortal Kombat Aftermath is a welcome addition to Mortal Kombat 11. 
and it is a bit of a return to form for story expansions that we were getting around that mid to late 2000s. We've had a heap of multiplayer expansions recently with new multiplayer maps and new weapons with games like Call of Duty and Battlefield and such, but it's nice to get a story expansion that keeps a year old title alive. Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath has me really excited for the only other game that can hold a candle to Mortal Kombat, and that's Injustice. The story and ending has me waiting in anticipation for not only Mortal Kombat 12, but the next Injustice series as Mortal Kombat learns from Injustice and vice versa. The Mortal Kombat 11 DLC expansion Aftermath is available now.